Here's a wild tour story. When I first joined Public Enemy uh, in Sardinia, got a bomb threat in Sardinia. In a hotel, I, I, I remember I was green as an apple, carrying everything. They had me carrying turntables and a banner and the whole nine. And uh, I was exhausted, laid on the bed. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. And all of a sudden you hear, boom, 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 boom. Sir, you have to evacuate the hotel, sir. Boom, boom, boom. I jump up, open the door. Here's a guy with a German Shepherd and a beeping device. Sir, you, you have to evacuate the hotel now. There's a bomb threat in the hotel right now. So I'm already, again, green as an apple with public enemy, okay? So I'm running outside. There's people in towels. There's people with shampoo in their hair. There's people in robes. And there was an actual bomb threat in the hotel. And this was right when I joined public enemy. So I'm shook. They didn't find anything talking to Chuck. I was like, Chuck, man, did you hear there's a bomb threat in the hotel? He's like, oh, that's nothing, Lord. You remember Flavor in 87, there was a bomb under the stage. Flavor's like, yeah, boy, there was a bomb under That was crazy, G. So that was a game changer for me, being on tour with Public Enemy out the gate. But the story that Chuck told me when he actually had to dismantle a bomb under the stage in the beginning, yeah, in the early days of Public Enemy, that made it real for me because I knew the message was real. I just didn't know how real it was in their organizations that didn't want people to get certain messages or to unify. And once Chuck gave me the breakdown of that story and they actually had to physically dismantle it under the stage, yeah, put me in a whole different mind state. Having this opportunity to actually replace Terminator X and fill that position with Public Enemy came with a lot of flack. I'm blessed, I'm happy that I got through it, but it has not been an easy journey filling those shoes. I mean, I was getting flack from the fans. I was getting flack from, I mean, online, offline. I mean, look at it. It, it, it. Again, this legendary guy, and here comes this new guy, DJ Lord, out of nowhere, replacing the legendary Terminator X. I mean, from people calling me Terminator 2, <laughs> to people just outright, just not accepting me as being the new DJ for Public Enemy. I had to go through changes and situations and prove myself over and over again to a point, again, make it undeniable that, yo man, I'm dope and I'm here to stay. So, and Terminator X is my homie. Um, I told him about him, actually, we met at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. And I told him that, dude, it's been a freaking rocky road trying to come after you. He's like, man, at least I'm, I'm happy that they replaced me with somebody dope. You know, we met at that level. When Biggs made the bet that I couldn't do those scratches over that I made up, you know, we made a bet for a nice substantial amount of money. And of course he lost and I bought a nice little vehicle with that money. I'm still thinking that's some sound guy or whatever. And he's going, blah, 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 blah. and I go, huh? And he just stole on me. Pop clocked me like right around here. He, like he's, he got me good. The plate hangs on a rope with the is with the food that Flavor ate with the bite out of the burger that he left on the plate. You know, our radio show was never a platform to get someplace else. It was it was the end result. It's what we wanted. We we didn't have any ambitions for the show other than like Bob always says, other than to have an incredible tape the next day.